that uh, completes the list of uh, speakers that I have. Is there anybody in the audience that had a topic that... Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask Corey Hall to come and update us on the transportation Thank you for having me here today. I'm going to update on several items that have been going on in transportation. Um, first, the Los Alamos Metropolitan Planning Organization last week adopted a 2040 transportation plan for transportation for our entire community. It includes a billion dollars for transportation to spend over the next 25 years. 400 million of that is federal funds, and I'm going to get to that federal funding point later. Um, we know the transit um, has been a topic of discussion here recently. Um, several interesting things are happening. Last two weeks ago, we released a request for proposal for a consulting firm to come in and study an urban public transit system in the Velasco Urbanized area. We hope to have them under contract by November 1st in results of the study. Um, about a year out from that. Um, that study we hope to identify what are um, some options for public, urban public transit in the urbanized area of Velasco and Miles County, um, and then how to efficiently and cost effectively deliver that um, service to our community. Um, second to that, um, the Southern Georgia Regional Commission, under a contract with the Department of Human Services in the state, will be starting on October 1st, a fixed route pilot program for transit in the city of Alaska and may enter into some areas of Lowndes County. It will be a pilot program. The funding expires on June 30th of 2016, so it will not go beyond that date. We are trying to figure out now what our areas of service would be eligible clients, it would also give our local elected officials some hard information on what a public transit system can do. We would be contracting with our existing contractor, Bids Incorporated, here in Velasco, uh, to operate that service for us. So there's a lot of questions we don't have about that yet, but um, we'll be getting that uh, up and running. Again, it's a pilot program that would cease operations on June 30th. Another request for proposals we've sent out is on a truck traffic study for uh, mitigating truck traffic impacts in downtown Alaska. Uh, again, we hope to have that contract, uh, a consultant under contract by November 1st with results from that uh, about a year out. One of the things that we're looking at that for is not only the current truck traffic in downtown Alaska, but future truck traffic. It, this is one thing that Jim asked me to specifically address. In our transportation plan, we highlight the 2013 uh, Federal Highway Administration study that says nationwide we're expecting to see truck traffic increase by 45% by the year 2040. The, I'm sure everyone's aware of the Savannah Harbor Expansion Project. That is being completed for multiple reasons, but one of those is the Panama Canal expansion which is to be open here in the next couple of years. The Panama Canal can currently handle ships carrying four to 5,000 20-foot equivalent units. So it's those box containers you see on shipping containers on gas and trucks. Those that are 20-foot long, it can handle four to 5,000 of those right now. With the Panama Canal expansion and the Savannah Harbor expansion, those new ships will be 12 to 13,000 containers each. So anywhere from a tripling to double the tripling of the amount of containers coming into the East Coast ports uh, over the next 25 years is projected. So we need to be able to make sure our road infrastructure can handle that. One thing out of that between us and Savannah is the widening of Highway 84. The DOT is letting that project as we speak. That roadway will be widened between Homerville and Waycross. Uh, the only thing in its way is the federal action on the Federal Highway Trust Fund. That is set to expire October 29th. Uh, right now, it is being, there's a bill in the Senate, H.R. 22, the Drive Act. However, it is a, also is a health care and defense appropriations bill that has been 
amended to be a transformation bill. So you may get two sources of information on that. That's HR 22. Uh, is it HR 22 or SB 22? HR 22. It's a revenue generating bill, so it must have originated in the House. So that's why they took a defense appropriations bill, gutted it, and now it's a transportation bill. So we all know how it goes. But that is, right now, Congress is trying to debate how to fund transportation in the long term. There are lots of fixes they're looking at. Um, the last time they did a fix, they did 10 years of tweaks to the federal budget, and they have 18 months of funding. They're trying to do another 10 years of tweaks this time around to maybe get three years of funding, but that's still not a long-term solution to transportation funding. Um, so that would be an interesting topic for everyone to watch over the next couple of months. I think that Buddy Carter, he's the first uh, local elected official here to be really talk about transportation in Washington. Um, so I think that was good when we spoke last week about that. Um, I think it's on a lot of their minds and they want to have a bill adopted um, by the end of October. Um, so I, hopefully we'll see some uh, action on that. Uh, other than that, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And you may have said it wouldn't will the study be finished for our local mass transit study? We're looking um, a year from November. And same for the track by gas? Yes. Corey, are, are both those two items in the 25-year uh, budget? They are, it's, they're not included in the budget for the 25-2040 transportation plan. And we fund those under different programs. But they are mentioned in the monitoring. Any further questions for Corey? Okay. The transportation planners uh, plan for mass transit. Uh, is that a, a system that has to carry maybe more than one or two people at a time? Do they uh, incorporate new technologies in their planning, such as? Uh, you know, whenever we go places now, we just use Uber because it's cheaper and faster than public transportation. But there, are there any planners, or when you go to these meetings that planners have where they talk about determining who needs transportation and where they have to go, maybe issuing a chip for someone like Uber to take them somewhere because of transportation, public transportation for the most part is a, is a, uh, you know, a revenue loss for most communities. But uh, it seems like you could, for the money that you pay to have a public transportation system, you could accommodate everybody's uh, transportation needs that was truly in need if you used a facility like Uber or something like that. Something like a snap card for yes. transportation? Well, we have um, asked our consultants to be innovative in that respect. Um, and companies, communities are using these new technologies. MARTA has signed a contract with Uber to deliver some of their passengers. So there are options out there, and we can't just think of ourselves as a community with a bus system. We, I don't think that is the way for us to go. We need to be more innovative in how we deliver um, transportation in the future, and we have to consult to do that. Corey, here you need specific projects that would affect us from a regional standpoint that are going to be up for funding in the next six months. Yes, that actually reminded me of two things. Um, yes, we have exit 22 and 29. Those are going to be up for full reconstruction. I believe their anticipated budget date is March of 2016 um, by GDOT. They're still in the right of acquisition process on both of those interchanges. That's going to be a, a several month long process to completely tear down those interchanges and reconstruct the, both of those. Exit 2 will start soon after that, and Exit 11 after Exit 2 starts. So those projects are all going along. The continued um, Highway 133 expansion to Moultrie, um, that will continue on for, for several years. As I already said, the um, uh, US 84 between Homerville and Waycross, again, that's 
that's another example. Another thing that you may have already heard this morning um, in the Macon newspaper, uh, the Macon region counties have voted to start their regional peace loss program again. They're going to debate whether to put a regional 1% sales tax on their ballot. Um, so it's, it's, they haven't called the referendum yet, but they've started that process. Um, we have been, as the regional commission, we have been asked by our council um, to host a meeting uh, with the state officials to inform our 18 county region about options for that regional peace loss to get us So those are some of the tax coming for me. One more question. Um, as far as transportation funding replaced last session, how does that change the landscape or how we're going about lobbying for funding within our area? Are we is it now controlled mostly by the DOT? Is it still controlled by the legislature to a certain extent? Yeah. How are those funds out? Um, those funds are allocated by what is called Congressional District Balancing in the state of Georgia. Every Congressional District receives the same amount of funding every year. Um, that way, Atlanta does not get more than South Georgia and so on. Um, so you got to think, most of Lowndes County's Congressional District is District 8. So Valdosta, Warner Robins, some of Macon, Tifton, and then the other areas in between that. Um, there's a couple of caveats that though. The interstates are not included in that. So we've done pretty good having several interstate projects here. Freight corridors are not included in that. That means the Highway 84 between Homer Hill and Waycross, Highway 133 are not included in that because they're considered freight corridors. So that's additional funding that those congressional districts receive. Um, they, so that money that was passed in the last legislative session still balanced by congressional district. Uh, so no one gets more than another except for those interstate or freight corridors. Uh, now for our region, after we get those interstate projects done, uh, we're not going to have, there's not any other interstate projects, significant projects proposed out there. Uh, Exit 18 is long range in our program, but uh, other than that, there's not any others out there. So, Greg, what I'm hearing is that a stable source of funding will kind of stabilize that system or make it more predictable. Uh, whereas if they run out of funding and they get cancel contracts and things, then you got to reinvent the wheel. And uh, so hopefully it'll still stabilize uh, all of it. Not, I mean, I know that from the air side, but also on the ground side as well, hopefully it'll stabilize. Okay. Transportation for us is a big, big key there is to get long term, long term reauthorization of that. If not, we're still working at Two months at a time. I don't know anybody can plan on a project at all. Two months at a time, and, and they don't. I mean, Georgia has right now 150 million dollars in projects sitting on the shelf, ready to be let because there is no funding. Yeah, too much. You don't have a short My question is, Jay Roberts and Tim Jordan are our key people. It's not the legislature. Yes. Any other questions for the board? What they're not can a seven or eight cents per gallon tax added to the cost of gasoline this year? There was, it's, 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 it was initially talked of like that. However, the actual price of gas decreased when the new um, excise tax was put in place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's based on the, it's actually not the tax that increased, it's the Rest of the price of gasoline has decreased. I have to say that somewhere recently, that the state of actually the legislature had to sell and have eight cents per gallon. That, 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 yeah. But they were doing, it's through, their, their, long time to do it, through their legislative session, um, the average mm -hmm. cost of gasoline at that time. And that's above and beyond T plus to what yes. become the issue. Correct. That's right. And Mr. Chairman, yes. um, if I may, uh, one of our downtown businesses owners just share with the group, uh, if, if it's okay with you, uh, his request that the chamber get very seriously behind the downtown truck route uh, study at Stogie downtown, and uh, they noted that there's a continuous flow of heavy commercial traffic through downtown. There's 
non-stop traffic flow at 8 o'clock in the morning till 7 p.m. is causing a problem for the businesses downtown, especially those that have sidewalk tables for their customers. Uh, they often see, pre they frequently see CDL truck speeds exceeding the posted 25 miles per limit. Frequent trucks moving east on the hill and turning right onto South Patterson, especially logging trucks, cut the corner with the back of their trailers, climbing the curb, uh, and about 50% of all turning is 18 wheel trucks. Many truckers also take a turn at unsafe speeds. They've seen at least two trucks come very close to cars parked in front of their store. Uh, concerned for pedestrians crossing the street or waiting at corners. Two serious accidents at the intersection where a vehicle is run a red line and concern for building safety with the speed of those <coughs> big trucks. Uh, and the noise level of the trucks, truck traffic is detrimental to attracting um, any kind of sidewalk business downtown and, and, the, and, the, and is uh, detrimental to the, the cool community atmosphere we're trying to create in downtown. And Stokey's downtown respectfully requests that we support uh, downtown truck bypass. I guess we have to wait until we decide to do something about, it, about something like that before we can support it. We'll have to wait and see what the study says, right, Corey? That's right. If you want to see more information about the detailed scope of work we're asking the consultants to do, probably the truck board transit study. Both of those are on the regional commission's website.